Hey guys, this is the first video in my guitar fretboard geometry series where we are going to pick apart the note patterns on the guitar fretboard to see how they're laid out in an organized, symmetrical, and geometric way. And once you understand these patterns, you can follow them to play scales, melodies, chords, and progressions, and then weave all of these patterns together using the logic of music theory to create beautiful songs. Now, in a nutshell, that is how all the great musicians do it. If you've ever seen musicians like Jimmy Page or Jimi Hendrix or Eric Clapton or George Harrison as they fly around the fretboard, nimbly moving from one note to the next, you might've wondered, how on earth do they do that? How do they keep their bearings? And are they just hunting and pecking or do they know some kind of hidden pattern that's going on there? Well, that's in essence what they're doing is they are following these patterns and they're geometric patterns, which we'll show in this series. And we can see these patterns using color music to really understand the underlying logic of music theory. And if you haven't seen my basic series on this channel, definitely check that out because it explains how you colorize sound and use the familiar patterns of color to understand the otherwise foreign language of music theory. So you have a kind of x-ray vision to picture the patterns of music. But it's about more than just seeing what's going on. It's not just a game of monkey see, monkey do to merely memorize and, and help with your muscle memory to find the notes and play. What's beautiful is that the simple, symmetrical, geometric patterns of color perfectly mirror the same simple geometry of music. And in this video series, we're gonna look at the six basic patterns that are at play here. When you get right down to it, the guitar fretboard can be dissected and understood using these six basic patterns, these symmetrical geometric patterns that are visible with color and that follow the same audible patterns of music. Each separate video in this series illustrates how these patterns are laid out on the fretboard one interval pattern at a time. But in this first video, I'm gonna introduce you to all six patterns. And the first thing to understand is that they're all essentially built from the two most basic types of intervals in the chromatic scale whole steps and half steps. At its most basic level, the chromatic scale is made up of just these two types of intervals, whole steps and half steps, which the colors and shapes emphasize by forming two sets of interlocking whole step intervals where one set is all squares and the other is all circles. And you can see that all of the squares align with the primary and secondary colors while the circles include all of the tertiary colors. And using these basic interval patterns, we can really start to dive in and see how the colors begin to reveal some interesting patterns with the scale degrees, like in the key of C, for example. Since one is a red square in the key of C, this means that you can quickly spot all of the other scale degrees too, including intervals two, three, flat five, flat six, and flat seven, which are all evenly spaced within the squares, and intervals flat two, flat three, four, five, six, and seven, which are shown as circles. Both the colors and shapes correlate with the scale degrees, revealing the simple and distinct patterns that are difficult to discern with the numbers alone, yet they're now apparent with the aid of color. And when you look even further, you can see even more connections, like all the intervals spaced at two whole steps from each other, which form perfect triangles of primary colors, one, three, and flat six, secondary colors, two, flat five, and flat seven, and two sets of tertiary colors, flat two, four, and six, and flat three, five, and seven. It's interesting, right? And going even further, at a space of three whole step intervals, every note is positioned across from its polar opposite and complementary color, also known as a tritone interval, since it's three tri whole tones away. Like scale degrees one and flat five in the squares, along with intervals two and flat six, and three and flat seven, as well as numbers flat two and five, flat three and six, and four and seven in the circles. These three patterns arise from the whole step intervals. And when you look at the half step intervals, three more patterns also appear, which show up in the key of C, for example. Like scale degrees flat two and seven positioned on either side of one C, and scale degrees flat three and six, each at an interval of one and a half steps from one, and intervals four and five as well, each spaced at a distance of two and a half steps from one, which form another pair of circles on either side of square one. With color music, it's now impossible to miss the geometric symmetry of all these intervals too, which again reveal the fundamental simplicity of music that's otherwise masked by the asymmetrical appearance of the numbers alone. Numbers that utterly fail to convey the elegance of these geometric connections. It is amazing actually how these color patterns, how the geometry of color 
perfectly mirrors the geometry of music. And what's even cooler is that these same patterns are consistent from one key to the next. So when you shift the scale degrees to highlight, say, the key of G, the same interval patterns appear. Highlighted, of course, by the same color patterns as well. So when G, the red-orange circle in this diagram, is 1, again, all of the same interval patterns align with these same geometric patterns. So once you see these patterns in one key, once you understand how they work in one key, you've basically learned how all the other keys work as well. So learn one key, and you understand all 12. Likewise, when you move to the key of D, so that interval 1 aligns with the orange square, the scale degrees shift, but the underlying intervals remain the same, as the colors show. And when you move again, say, to the key of A, where the circle, orange-yellow, A, is now 1, again, the scale degrees shift, but the underlying intervals remain the same. The same geometric patterns appear as the colors show, and they perfectly align with the interval patterns of music. And it naturally follows that all 12 keys work in exactly the same way. So once you've learned these patterns in one key, once you can see them in one key, you've essentially learned all 12 keys already whether it's the key of E or B, G flat, D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, F, or again C. So all 12 keys are buzzing with a variety of relationships. And what's beautiful is that Mother Nature has been so good to us by making them predictable, symmetrical, and again, geometric. With three patterns that stem from the whole step intervals and three patterns that stem from the half step intervals. But for as beautiful as these patterns are in a circular format, they're even better when applied to the guitar fretboard, like you can see here in the key of C. The symmetrical geometry of these patterns really informs how your fingers can move from fret to fret and string to string, which I'll explain as we advance in this series. So again, each pattern informs the various moves that are possible on the fretboard. Just like in chess, the different pieces inform the movements that are possible on the chessboard. In fact, learning about intervals and playing these different patterns on the fretboard is a bit like learning to play chess, which can be a lot to take in when you're new to the game with all the pieces scattered across the board. So to break things down, it helps to first isolate the individual movements of each piece, dissecting the game one layer at a time so you understand all the component parts on their own, as you can see here. So when you put all the pieces together again, you can wrap your head around how the game is played. And the same is true for music theory. As with chess, it helps to dissect these patterns one layer at a time, so that when you combine them once more, you sound like a damn genius. So in the next video, we're going to look at intervals 1 and sharp 4 slash flat 5 to see how these patterns rise up the fretboard in different keys. So if you like this video, definitely subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next video.